Where are you going? Huh? <laughs> I love him. Well, hi there. This adorable little fur ball is Toaster, and he is a chinchilla, and a very delightful chinchilla at that. And chinchillas, unlike rabbits, are actually rodents. And yet, you know, whereas rodents in general get a lot of hate, I think pretty much everyone on Earth loves a chinchilla, at least if they know what it is. These adorable little fluffers are found at high elevation in the Andes Mountains of South America. Now, I used to live in the Andes, but I never saw one of these, and that's probably because I was in Peru. And today, their range no longer includes Peru, but only includes parts of Chile. That said, my friend Jessica recently sent me this picture while she was in the Peruvian Andes. She said it was a chinchilla, but it can't be, right? And it, it looks more rabbit-like than, well, this chinchilla does. Just look at their ears. I did eventually figure out what it was, and I will tell you that here in a minute. But right now, I want to focus on what is right here in front of me, because this is such a special little animal. But the question is, is it a good pet? And is the chinchilla the best pet mammal for you? And to help you figure this out, we're going to have to give not just toaster, but chinchillas in general, a score based on our five categories, which are, as always, handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the chinchilla a score of three out of five. Chinchillas look very soft and cuddly, and uh, they are very soft. They have the densest fur of any animal that doesn't live in the water. Sea otters have them beat, but these have like 50 plus hairs per follicle, 20,000 hairs per square centimeter. That's a lot of hair. And they live in social groups called herds. They're moving in herds. They do move in herds. So they very well may be cuddly little creatures, at least perhaps, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be cuddly with you. Chinchillas are fairly big for rodents, but they're still relatively small, and they can be very delicate. They have a very fragile bone structure, including really skinny, fragile little ribs. So you need to be very gentle when handling them, and make sure you never put much pressure on that rib cage, because it doesn't look like it could handle much. That said, you don't need to worry quite as much about their spine as you do with rabbits. It is really important, though, to support Support their body as evenly as you can and avoid squeezing them too tightly, which might be a temptation because they do like to move around. Chinchillas can be quite skittish, and uh, the reality is Toaster here is an extra sociable little chinchilla. It may take a chinchilla quite some time to become comfortable with handling or, or interaction directly with you at all. But with patience and gentle interaction, they can learn to trust you and may even enjoy at least some handling and in getting some pets from time to time, which is a delightful experience. Oh my, that is the softest thing on planet Earth. Toaster, you are a delight. You are a delightful fellow. While we're talking about how freakishly soft this animal is, I just want to say that we have a real soft spot for those of you that support us on Patreon. It does so much to help us create this sort of content and just keep us going creating this library of videos like this to help you pick the exact right pet for you. And if you'd like to support us in continuing on with this mission or just see the awesome features we have for our patrons, please consider supporting us and we'll have a soft spot for you too. So one thing about their fur, it feels amazing. It is, as we mentioned before, super dense and incredible, but part of their ability to escape from predators is their ability to drop big chunks of fur. So if, say, a small child would be to grab them, there's a good chance that you would have a chinchilla with a big old bald spot afterward. And that said, some chinchillas will remain more nervous and may not enjoy handling nearly as much as others. 
While chinchillas are not known for being biters, uh, they can nip if they feel threatened or scared, and rodent bites are nasty. They've got these huge, continuously growing incisors, and they're basically like a staple gun. Proper handling techniques in building trust with your chinchilla can minimize the chances of being bitten. But they can also scratch, and they can jump several feet, so uh, keep that in mind whenever you're handling them. They can be handled, at least if you're willing to handle them on their terms, but it requires patience, gentleness, and an understanding of their delicate nature. It's important to remember that each chinchilla is different, and some may be more comfortable with handling than others. So if you're looking for a cuddly pet, a chinchilla, depending on the individual and the work that you put into it, might be a good fit, but you're always going to need to handle them with care, and the reality is, for as soft as they are, there are some mammals that are considerably easier to cuddle than this, but not more desirable. Oh, I should add on to there. They do poop a lot. They're rodents, after all, but their poops are delightfully dry, which, you know, if you're going to get pooped on on a regular basis, dry is a bonus, and you can suck them up with the vacuum cleaner. They also make cecotropes, sort of like rabbits. So if you want to know more about that and that little train, check out our video on rabbits. Oh, and they can't drop their tails. All a bonus. So there's a lot of upside, but handling them by and large, looks more like what, what Toaster and I are doing here, and uh, not so much like picking them up and carrying them around and snuggling them on the couch. Today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. And I've been talking about the Ridge Wallet for years now on this channel, and I can tell you a lot of people come here to Clint's Reptile Room, and they pull out their Ridge Wallet, and they, 100% of the time, tell me how much they love their Ridge Wallet, which really, really makes me happy. I've not had a single person come in here and be like, I don't like my Ridge Wallet. I, you know, you told me to get it. It's terrible advice. They all tell me how much they love it. I, I'm, I'm now carrying the third one that I've carried. All three of them are here. They all still look great because they are guaranteed for life after all. I've loved each and every one of them. There are more between, between the three of us, me, Jason, and Will. We all carry Ridge Wallets. You can even get your wallet and key case bundled together in what is known as the Daily Driver Kit if you want both and you want to save a little money. And this key case is really quite rad. If you've got a lot of keys that are usually out and jingling around and all over the place and poking you, these all fit together almost like a Swiss Army knife. And now they just roll out silently just when you need them and the rest of the time they're tucked away inside this bodacious Ridge key case. And look at how many cool colors and styles there are. It's honestly so hard to pick which one I like the best. That's probably why I keep switching Ridge wallets. Um, one might not be enough. It's awesome. And if you're interested in a Ridge wallet yourself, uh, check out our link, ridge.com slash Clint. That's ridge.com slash Clint. You can even save a little money. When it comes to care, we give the chinchilla a score of three out of five. Chinchillas are relatively low maintenance pets, at least for a mammal, but they do require some specific conditions to ensure that they remain healthy. One of the most crucial aspects of chinchilla care is maintaining the correct temperature. Chinchillas originate from the Andes Mountains of South America, where they experience cooler temperatures. In fact, I've never been colder in my entire life than I was when I lived in the Andes. As such, you should keep their environment between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 15 to 21 degrees Celsius. Temperatures above 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius, can cause heat stroke, which can be life-threatening for your chinchilla. And that's a big deal because your house may get warmer than this uh, often. They cool themselves with their ears like elephants. If you notice that your chinchilla's ears are turning red, it's probably too hot for them. They also require a cooling stone which is like a little tile like this one, but it effectively acts as a heat sink. And if they start to overheat, they can go put their little feet on it and just chill out a little bit. That's very important for them because these guys, they're very prone to overheating. When selecting an enclosure for your chinchilla, the bigger the better. Chinchillas are active animals that enjoy climbing and jumping like up to five or six feet. So provide multi-level enclosures with ledges, branches, or platforms to climb on. Make sure it has a solid floor as wired floors can hurt their little feet. You wouldn't want that. 
Ensure that there's proper ventilation and definitely avoid direct sunlight. That can elevate the temperatures really rapidly. And remember, they need it cool. And also try to make sure that this enclosure can be located in a quiet area that's away from drafts and loud noises. Use a safe, absorbent, relatively dust-free bedding material such as aspen shavings or paper-based bedding. Avoid cedar shavings as they can be toxic to chinchillas and uh, a whole lot of other things. I really don't know why they sell them at all. Who Who's using cedar bedding? Replace the bedding regularly to maintain cleanliness and reduce odor. So that's if you want to use a loose bedding like that. However, due to their dry stool and propensity to potentially eat that bedding, a better option for bedding would be just to coat the bottom of the enclosure with fleece. And uh, I mean, that's just as soft and delightful as they are. Chinchillas need mental stimulation and exercise to stay healthy. Provide them with a variety of toys, such as chew toys, tunnels, and hiding spots. Chewing will be very important to keep their continuously growing incisors at a proper length as well. And be careful about other objects that they could chew, such as wires and precious family heirlooms. In addition to family heirlooms, they may actually chew holes right through your wall, like the mouse holes in cartoons. So. Uh, you might not want to let them just roam around unsupervised in your house. Ensure that they have access to an exercise wheel with a solid surface, again, to protect their little feet. And make sure that that solid wheel is made out of metal, because if it's plastic, um, they'll chew through it. Chinchillas also require a dust bath, like at least two to three times a week, in order to keep their fur clean and healthy. So provide a dust bath container with chinchilla-specific dust in it for them to roll in. Dust baths. They cool themselves with their ears. They really have a lot in common with elephants. Kind of a surprising amount. Uh, not closely related though, per se. Hyraxes are though. A chinchilla's diet um, actually is a little bit similar to that of an elephant as well. It should consist of high quality chinchilla pellets, which you probably don't feed to an elephant, hay, and fresh water. Timothy hay is an essential component in their diet, helping to maintain proper digestion and dental health. I don't think that this is quite as critical as it is with rabbits, but it's a pretty similar animal. It is potentially possible to give them small amounts of vegetables, but you might want to just avoid those entirely and definitely avoid fruits as they're high in sugar and water and uh, can lead to some less dry stools. Let's put it that way. Limit treats as chinchillas are kind of prone to obesity and diabetes. And remember that chinchillas are social animals, and so they might thrive the best when housed with a buddy. However, if you're choosing to house multiple chinchillas together, be prepared to separate them if they show signs of aggression, which means you might need to have two big chinchilla enclosures ready to go all the time. Regular interaction with their human caretakers is absolutely essential to maintain a strong bond and ensure that they're comfortable being handled. If you don't build this bond, then your chinchilla will become a look but don't touch companion. Overall, chinchilla care is relatively straightforward as long as you maintain the proper environment, diet, and enrichment opportunities. When it comes to hardiness, we give chinchillas a score of 4 out of 5. Chinchillas are generally hardy pets, however, they do have a few requirements that must be met for them to thrive. We've already mentioned their very fragile bone structure and temperature regulation. Chinchillas need a cool environment. They can easily overheat due to their dense fur, so keep their enclosure at room temperature with temperatures between 60 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 16 to 22 degrees Celsius, otherwise you're risking heat stress. Another important thing to keep in mind is their dental health. Provide chinchillas with plenty of chew toys and hay to wear down their constantly growing incisors. And additionally, chinchillas require a very clean and relatively dust-free environment. That's why we're saying if you're going to use a loose substrate, use one that's dust-free. Fleece would be even better. Uh, that'll prevent respiratory issues. And, and just try to regularly clean that enclosure. If you're using fleece, you can just vacuum it out because, again, their droppings are very dry. If your chinchilla does start to get really stressed, it may also start to eat sections of its own hair, which, you know, that's not going to kill it, but it is a sign that you need to change something. But if you're meeting all these requirements and you maintain a proper diet for your chinchilla, it's likely to be a hardy and healthy pet for well over a decade, sometimes up to about 20 years. When it comes to availability, we give the chinchilla a score of 5 out of 5. Chinchillas are really very easy to find at pet stores. They've become quite popular in the last 15 to 20 years. I just, I see them everywhere, which is amazing because at times we've wondered if they were extinct in the wild. 
You can also probably find them at like a local pet expo, which would be a great place to find a breeder that's local and it would give you an option to choose from a lot of different chinchillas as the individual personality of your chinchilla can matter a lot about what it is like to interact with. You can also find chinchillas available online from dedicated breeders who can ship them to you. Though, I mean, if I had the option to see the animal in person first, I would go that way. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the chinchilla a score of three out of five. Chinchillas themselves can range in price depending on color, age, and quality. You can expect to spend around $100 to $300 for chinchilla, perhaps more. Uh, this will vary tremendously based on where you purchase it and exactly what it looks like. Keep in mind that it's always best to choose a reputable breeder to ensure the health and well-being of your new pet. In this case, your new chinchilla. The cost of the enclosure itself will be a significant part of the upfront expenses. Chinchillas, like we said, are gonna require a large multi-level habitat with plenty of room to move and explore. Expect this to cost, you know, two to 300, or perhaps even quite a bit more than that. You will be glad you spent more if you get them a really, really awesome enclosure. And you'll need to provide a lot of other accessories such as shelves, ramps, hiding spots, and chew toys to keep your chinchilla entertained. Chinchillas can require specific bedding that's dust free or again, fleece covering, much better. You're gonna need food and water dishes, hay racks and a dust bath container. These are all necessary and, and really important to keep your chinchilla happy and healthy. And then of course you'll need some high quality hay and, and some pre-formulated chinchilla diet. They do really well with a lot of pre-formulated chinchilla pellets as well. You may want to invest in a water bottle as opposed to a bowl in order to prevent spills and messes in the enclosure. And it'll keep your chinchilla from getting wet. Uh, with all that fur, they don't dry out very fast. And don't forget to budget for a high quality dust bath powder to help maintain your chinchilla's luxurious coat. And I won't add this to the score on the upfront cost, but you might want to budget like say, probably 10 to $15,000 for damages to your home. They like to chew. But before we end this, um, what the heck was this thing? Well, it's not a chinchilla. There are two species of chinchillas, long and short-tailed chinchillas. And the ones that you're likely to see in pet stores, those are usually the long-tailed chinchilla. But both of them have somewhat rounded ears. Nothing like the rabbit ears of this creature. But that long tail gives it away that, well, it's, it's not a rabbit. And the reality is that this creature is a viscacha which is not a rabbit and not a chinchilla, but it is a chinchillid. In fact, and unsurprisingly, viscachas are the closest living relatives of the chinchillas, which, while we're talking about them, get an overall score of 3.6 out of five. If you are looking for an exotic mammal that is freakishly soft, but not that cuddly until you gain its trust, then the chinchilla might be the best pet mammal for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. <laughs> yeah. He won't bite you. Yeah. Hey, Toaster, come here, buddy. Hi. What are you up to? Where are you going? Huh? <laughs> I love him. Oh, you are the best thing ever. You're the best thing ever in the world. Why are you so adorable? <laughs> yeah, get it. <laughs> Oh man, I love you. You've already won me over, Toaster. Oh, come here. All right, don't jump off of there. It's too far. It's too far, it can't be done. No one's ever done, it's impossible. You'd be the first chinchilla ever to jump off of this table. Don't do it. Why are you so great? Why are you so great? He's like, eh, I'm getting tired of this guy. What's over here, what's over here, what's over here? Okay. Hmm? Do you have any explanation for yourself? But Would you like a stick? 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 See stick? It's stick! <laughs> stick, smart guy! See, it's a little nicer than if he was a Dilophosaurus. He hasn't eaten off your face yet. No wonder you're locally extinct in Peru. <laughs>